No, I like tacos. <laughs> I love tacos. I'd like to put a question before you. Now, TEDx is supposed to be about ideas worth spreading, right? Of course, I turned it off. Okay, let's try it again. There we go. About ideas worth spreading. So here's the idea. Great things can happen from unexpected places. Great things can happen from unexpected places. Here behind me is the proverbial glass of water. Half of you are thinking, is, is it half full? The other half of you are thinking, is it half empty? I'm thinking, what great thing can I do without water? That's a different way of looking at things, but it's a way that great things can happen. As an example, did you know that a peanut can save a community? You know, Dr. George Washington Carver, 100 years ago, recognized a community that was dying because cotton was killing the soil. So he used his prodigious knowledge in ecology to bring them crops that would actually enhance the soil. Then he created more than 100 products from that new source. So they could have a higher quality by the more things to sell. Great things can happen from unexpected places. And plus, it's a powerful lesson for us on sustainability. People, profit, and planet 100 years before any university used that concept. So let's bring it into today's context. And since it is about food, that's what today is about, food. This is our beautiful oasis in the desert. Several thousand miles, square miles of city, 4.5 million people, and 5,000 years of agricultural heritage. Yes, people have been here that long because this place was founded on seven rivers. Now we use eight. But we also have problems. Climate change. Now, by the way, these haboobs, as some people call them, these were common when I was a child. Then they stopped, then they came back. But climate change and drought. That 4.5 million people require 7 billion pounds of food every year to survive, and most of it is imported. And then it's imported from places that don't have much water either, and so they can't grow the food they used to, therefore the prices of the food go up. And much of it is what, as one radio station called, technically edible. Not very high quality, which as exacerbates epidemics of obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack, and stroke. By the way, I definitely am going to try that, those beats. <laughs> and the size of our city is a prescription for food deserts, which can be described as, as places where people cannot get to the healthy food because it's too far away. Can you imagine elders and the poor, 110 degrees, trying to get to the market on the bus two miles away? My microphone's falling off. There we go. All right, okay. And the increasing food prices and energy prices lead poor families into a, death, into a, a, a negative feedback cycle where they have to begin, in order to pay the rent, they have to skimp on their nutritional choices, and which hurts their family health. And this is particularly bad on the kids. Because believe me when I tell you that if a child can't eat, a child cannot learn. And if a child can't learn, a child cannot succeed. So how are we going to fix this? Well, here's another thought for you. What we need is a solar panel that produces food for a family the same way the ones on our roots produce energy for a family. And guess what? We got one. It's called aquaponics. Aquaponics is a constructed ecology where fish waste is converted to plant food by microorganisms which in turn clean the water again for the fish. It was an ancient technology that was brought into its current iteration by the University of the Virgin Islands, because they're a water poor area also. And it's so simple. You take the water in, you take the fish in the, tr the, um, tr in the trough on the left, and you pump it into the water on the top. 
that separates the solid waste, allows the liquid waste to go into the gravel, which conditions the, which, which conditions the water for the fish, because that's where the bacteria are. So the water comes back into the fish clean, but also it turns the waste into plant food so plants can grow. And boy, do they grow. This is, this is just two months worth of growth for this really simple thing we built. And entrepreneurs all over our state, nation, and country are growing food in their backyards using this new technology. They're creating commercial facilities such as this, or even using the ubiquitous horse trough again to grow food in their apartments. It's an amazing technology that I truly do believe in. And what we grow? We grow fish. We grow trout. We grow giant freshwater shrimp. We, yes, they do get that big. We grow lettuce. We grow basils, greens, melons, even ornamental flowers. But what can you do with food beyond eat it? You see, what kind of great things can we do with what we have beyond simply eating these things? Now, mind you, we can do some great things as far as our health are concerned. But that's where science, technology, engineering, and math education come into play. Did you lose me? OK. Fortunately, my father was a preacher. <laughs> square foot greenhouse and inside of this greenhouse we are seeking to reproduce the effects that we have on the reservation. We're seeking to engage the community as much as possible for all 1,500 households in the service area for this school. We engage them in economics, engage them in social life skills, engage them in environmental skills including science, technology, engineering, and math. And now with a new partner, Mesa Community College, and their tremendous grant writing abilities, we have been able to win an EPA grant, a significant one, that is going to allow us to, to, to completely fill out, no, fill out the, the laboratory in the greenhouse, is going to allow us to build a new aquaponics learning lab at Mesa Community College, it's going to allow us to provide grants to schools so they can have their own laboratories and the curriculum necessary to run them. We're going to be able to spread this kind of wonderful technology and STEM education across this city beginning with this grant. Now I've only touched the tip of the iceberg with this concept, but now comes my message to you. This is an opportunity for you to volunteer. This opportunity to check out the, the Brooks School or any school in this area as far as assisting them with their gardens, assisting them with their aquaponics because that's how students can learn hands-on from food, can food they can take home and show their parents how to do it as well. And so the key to the future is in your backyards as far as you growing your own food. And so I encourage you to take the moment and do something great with what you've got and expect 
wonders. Thank you. Woo!